Our first company presentation this afternoon is from Phoenix Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome Rob Briley, the Managing Director, to the podium. Phoenix is about to become Australia's next iron ore producer, with first shipments from its WA project just weeks away. Trucking is set to start any day now, if it hasn't already, meaning that Phoenix is set to enjoy bumper margins based on the low costs of its DSI operation and the strong iron ore price. Phoenix is currently capped at $48 million. Could you please welcome Rob Riley to introduce Phoenix Resources? Um, uh, thank you. Welcome uh, to all and thank you for listening to my story um, and to the Phoenix story and uh, welcome to the people in the Gold Coast. Um, Phoenix Resources, we've only been around uh, for two years. We've achieved a lot in those, uh, in those two years um, and uh, as mentioned, we're, we're on the cusp of going into production. Um, mind you, our first shipment's not expected in the next couple of weeks. It's uh, well, maybe in the next couple of months, hopefully January. Uh, the disclosure, um, uh, if you want to read that uh, or get a summary, Don can summarise that for you. Uh, Phoenix Resources, what are, who are we and why are we? We're a 100% owner of a, a deposit called Iron Ridge, which is up in the World Ranges in the Midwest region of, of WA. Um, we're about 490 k's by road from the port of Geraldton. Uh, uh, that's a fair distance and um, that's been, uh, it's our largest cost is to get it to the, uh, to the port. There's no railway line out there, um, but we do have Bitumen Road nearly all the way. Um, and we do have a, a port in Geraldton that's, um, that is underutilised and we've all, we're very close to um, confirming our, our port allocation there. Um, one of our major attributes is a very low capital intensity to get this project up and running. It's only a $12 million capital expenditure. We raised $15 million in August this year uh, in, in equity and that's, uh, that's going to underpin all our capex. Um, uh, when we did our feasibility study in November last year, we, we thought we had a decent project, a modest MPV of about 50 million bucks, um, and you know, average annual EBITDA of about 16 million. You know, not bad little project, but nothing to, to write home about. But what's changed over this last year, of course, um, and again alluding to what Don said, I um, mean, you know. Uh, the, uh, the macro has changed substantially and the iron ore price is now about 60 bucks Aussie higher than what it was when we did our feasibility study. Some could argue we used relatively conservative numbers there, but far better to be conservative than uh, the other way around. So um, this project now has um, very compelling economics. Um, we're not going to try and change the world. We're not, a, we're, we're not another Twiggy Forest FMG. We don't have that uh, resource quantity. Uh, we've only got a small resource of around about 10 million tonnes, um, but it is high grade, and, and that is the real key attribute of this project is that significant grade, 64 per cent iron, second largest uh, or second highest grade um, iron ore deposit in the whole of Australia. Um, so significant in that respect. Very simple operation, just at one single open pit. Uh, no waste material, no tailings, dams, no, nothing like that. 64% in the ground. It just needs crushing and screening. And we're currently in development. We're about uh, less than two months away from being in production. And uh, we expect our first shipment to go January, February of this year. So capturing the, the high iron ore price. There's no 12 or 18 month um, construction period. Our construction period is 12 to 18 weeks, and we've probably been going for about eight weeks. So it just gives you, uh, uh, you know, what we've got ahead of ourselves. Still relatively modest enterprise value at uh, less than $40 million. I won't dwell on that. Share price bounces around all over the place. We've got, we're, we've got a, uh, as alluded to, we've got a market cap of around 50 million. We've got uh, sufficient cash to um, to fund all our capital expenditure. Um, which will be spent in the next um, two to three months. Uh, Iron Ridge, as I said, is in the World Ranges in the Midwest region of, of WA. Very great, uh, very good jurisdiction, obviously. We're fully permitted. We've got a feasibility study completed last year. We've got maiden ore reserves. Project development commenced in September this year. First production is expected uh, before year end. And as I said, first shipment expected in the first quarter this year. It's a very small footprint. It's one single open pit. 
to give you a perspective, it's the whole open pit is only 700 metres long and 480 metres wide. Goes to a depth of 155 metres at its deepest point. We've got about a six and a half year mine life. Uh, our costs, probably our, our total costs, including freight to China, is around about $110 Aussie per tonne, uh, which is uh, which is equivalent to about uh, what's that, 70, 80, 80 dollars US. Current iron ore price is 120 US, so it gives you healthy margins in that respect. Uh, very simple geology, uh, large 40 metre wide uh, BIF zone there, which has grades uh, that commence at 62% and by the, by the base of the open pit we're in to 66.5% iron ore, which is uh, very, very high grade. Um, very simple operation, um, one excavator, three trucks, so it's just a little quarry. Um, needs crushing and screening to separate the lump and the fines. Our ore is not your typical Pilbara hard iron ore, it's very soft and friable, so we can do that job with a mobile or modular crushing and screening plant. Uh, very simple operation uh, in that respect as well. As I mentioned, simple processing, very, very easy, uh, just a large screening plant really to separate the lump and the fines product. Uh, our uh, biggest issue, of course, is our, our tyranny of distance, our distance away from port. We'd love uh, our deposit to be sitting uh, uh, right on the doorstep of the, uh, of the coast somewhere, but uh, alas, that's not, not to be, and uh, probably if it, if, it, uh, if it was so, it would have been mined a long time ago. But it's, it's um, 480 k's is a long way to truck, um, but it is achievable. Uh, People will remember the Jack Hills operation of Murchison Metals uh, that was operating between 2005 and 2011. That actually trucked 630 kilometres, almost on the same road, by the way. So that's why uh, the road is bitumised um, almost all the way to our project, um, which is a real benefit. Um, and they made some dough out of it, and we intended to make a significant dough out of, uh, out of what we've got. Um, port capacity was another really compelling factor. Um, it wasn't too long ago when Geraldton Port was absolutely chock-a-block full. It's now, uh, it's got a dedicated iron ore shiploading berth that's capable of doing between six and seven million tonnes per annum. The only proponent uh, that's currently using that facility is Mount Gibson. It's mining at about two million tonnes per annum. Well, they're not even mining, they're just processing low-grade stockpiles. So we saw a real opportunity to get into uh, into uh, the Geraldton port and that's, uh, I'm glad we did because it's quickly filling up again with new iron ore projects uh, uh, being mooted that are, are probably 12 to 18 months behind our schedule and also some, believe it or not, some construction sand which is getting uh, shipped through Geraldton on its way to Singapore. So we've got, a, um, we've got all the road networks uh, able to, to start trucking. We've got a trucking joint venture we did with a very experienced um, trucking uh, expert called Craig Mitchell. So we, we did something innovative there. Instead of putting it out to contract and expecting uh, uh, having an adversarial relationship with uh, a key service provider, we've ended up doing a joint venture. Craig brings the trucking expertise, we bring the project, and we share in the benefits of, of, uh, of that contract and, and probably control our own destiny because trucking is 60% of our costs. Those feasibility studies, uh, we have to put these in because they are only published figures, uh, but you know, I'll just highlight that the, the, um, the iron ore price has moved substantially since uh, uh, this was um, published. We've got a relatively low strip ratio, that doesn't change. Our mineral inventory at eight million tonnes as I said, gives us a six and a half year mine life. Our reserve grade is something that's really special, nearly 63.9%, nearly 64%. Um, and, uh, you know, that was based on a $78 US iron ore price. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it's currently 120. So this is what's changed over the last, since we published our feasibility study on, on the, uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see the iron ore price in Australian dollar terms, um, and you'll see that red line there was the feasibility study number that we used. Um, it's never even gone close to, to going that low during during the last year or so, um, and you know it's currently uh, around about 60% higher than, than what we had all 50, 
59 per cent by, the, by those numbers. Um, and we've also had a, a significant benefit of the, uh, of the diesel price now being significantly lower than, um, than what we had in the feasibility study. Why is that important? Because obviously that 480 k is one way of trucking uses a lot of diesel. Uh, it's about, we use about 10 million litres uh, per year of diesel uh, for road haulage and probably another three to four million tonnes for the mining process. So, um, you know, it's 30 cents a litre less than what we had in our feasibility study. So you can quickly do the math and work out that's a, that's a significant cost saving. Uh, our, our capital numbers, obviously $11.9 million for our initial capex. Our opex is quite he high at uh, 86 Aussie per, uh, per tonne free on board. As I mentioned, when you add the freight from Geraldton, it's more or less 105 to 110 Aussie. 56% um, of our costs are in road transport, so it's significant. 27% uh, on mining, 12% on port, uh, 4 and a bit percent on corporate and overheads. Um, we're about 60% through that expenditure at the moment, and we'll be, uh, as I said, uh, in the next uh, week or so, we'll be uh, getting close to um, commencing with the crushing and screening. What have we achieved in the last two years? We've achieved a hell of a lot, actually. Um, we, we bought a project uh, from a private entity that, that uh, bought it from Atlas Iron. Uh, Atlas had done one drilling program there and come up with an inferred resource of 5 million tonnes at 64. We could see the potential of, uh, of that resource growing um, and we could also see the potential with an underutilised port at Geraldton and the existing infrastructure that was in place. So we uh, did a couple of drill programs um, uh, and came up with a resource of 10.5 million tonnes. Uh, we quickly went into feasibility study mode, completed that feasibility study last November, did it in-house. We've probably only spent about $7 million on that project. Uh, we run a pretty lean and mean show. Uh, we did most of our, uh, the feasibility study as much as possible in-house and, and had some really good quality consultants that we knew and trusted that did, uh, did our work and I thank all of them um, for, for their contribution because they were significant. Um, and then we got into permitting phase and permitting um, is an arduous process, but it's, it, it is a process and it does have timelines and um, things like that to it. So that and native title probably has took us six to nine months. It was, uh, I uh, probably got a lot of grey hairs from the process, but it's, um, but uh, I'm thankful that it's, that's over and we were able to raise our $15 million and start the project. Um, and as I mentioned uh, one other thing we've done is we've purchased some infrastructure at Geraldton which means we control the supply chain now. We bought a very good quality um, port storage shed and truck unloading facility there. Paid a million bucks for it. Probably the replacement value for that asset is probably closer to 20 million. Uh, there was an opportunity there with a lease from a, uh, from a, uh, uh, from a existing producer that hadn't been producing for a while that was expiring and we took that opportunity. Uh, we've contracted out all our main services, MACA Mining are doing the, uh, the mining, and as I mentioned, our road transport uh, joint venture is doing the, uh, the trucking. Um, so where are we at? As I mentioned, we'll be, we should be producing in December, and um, that'll, that'll uh, start the ball rolling and get us the ability to start trucking ore to the, uh, to the port. Uh, out of Geraldton, they ship 60,000 tonne shipments. Um, so we're, we'll be scrambling as much as we can to get that shipment out as soon as possible. Um, we've publicly said early 2021 um, and that should be very easily achieved. Uh, a picture tells a thousand words. This is, uh, this is the project as it was last week. It's probably changed a little bit since then. You can see that we're on the line of the, uh, the strike length of the deposit. There's an, a small existing pit there, which we've taken some bulk samples out, etc. And then in the distance, you'll see the the infrastructure all being cleared, the waste dump, etc. Um, all ready for uh, the delivery of the crushing and screening plant next week. Um, and that takes about two weeks to get up and up and running, and then we'll be in um, in production. Uh, that's that's the um, the footings going in for the uh, for the. Um, 
the stacking uh, of the lump and fines stockpile. Um, that's work going on there. That's, that's the cleared waste dump area um, that we've all got uh, ready for our waste dump. That's our access road, all sub-based and graded and, uh, and ready to be, uh, to be used. Our camp is about 60% complete. Um, we've been uh, racing the clock to get that camp up and running by, uh, by early December so we can, um, we can get out of our temporary uh, accommodation and, and into that camp. And that's, that's the Macca mining excavator. It's only a 120-tonne uh, digger. It's not a large excavator. We only move about 4 million tonnes per year of total product. It's, uh, it's not, a, not a big undertaking, one excavator and a couple of trucks. And that's a beautiful new uh, port shed that we, uh, that we bought. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of months, that, that'll have a whole heap of iron ore in it. But it's a good quality sh shed. Um, you need a storage shed in Geraldton. You can't just lay it out uh, in the paddock somewhere. Um, that's not good environmentally as far as dust, etc., like that goes. But it's a, uh, that facility is being recommissioned at the moment and should be ready in the next two weeks. So. What is Phoenix? We've got, we're a high-grade iron ore deposit. Um, we're we're going to be in production very quickly. We've got a very low capital uh, up front. Um, we're rapid time to first shipment, a couple of months, and we're in a great jurisdiction in WA, and those are the, the key attributes. And, and we also got a great iron ore price at the moment, which we should be able to capture in the not-too-distant future. And there's our iron ore price. Um, what it's been historically. And there's our uh, mineral resource and oil reserve statement. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. Before you escape, um, you must have done a pretty good job because we only got the one question in, but uh, it's, it's a good one. At the current spot iron ore price, can you say what the forecast EBITDA margin would be approximately or give EBITDA people some margin? We'd be making, um, <laughs> yeah, we'd be making about 70 million bucks uh, in the first year. Okay, excellent. Mm. Okay. Thanks Thank very you. much.